Uh, all right, that's my first video on Cosmic, so I'll try to go for a wholesome walkthrough of everything, but without much of details, because there is so fucking much to show and so little time. Um, but first let me quickly share with you what I do like on the project and what worries me, okay? Obviously, I love the Rust thing. Rust has a powerful type system and ownership model that prevent common errors such as memory leaks, data races, and null pointers. This makes Rust code more reliable and secure, which is important for UI development. And starting from version 1.75, it implements the async on traits that will greatly benefit the responsiveness and scalability of the desktop GUI. I totally and completely love the modularity of the project. The window manager, the compositor, even the toolkit itself are independent community libraries that many Rust projects share already. Just think of how Mutter is so locked in GNOME that will never happen with Smithai, the compositor that Cosmic Compositor is built upon. And of course, Cosmic contributes back to community. For instance, Cosmic Text is already like the standard Rust library for handling text used in tents of projects. Do you even remember System76 having contribute anything back in GNOME? Surely not. Want to dramatize this a bit more, maybe? In more like 20 years of Linux desktop, remind of yourselves all these conflicts between GNOME and KDE. Even better? Think of the fights between GNOME-based projects like GNOME and Cinnamon, or KDE-based projects like Plasma and Deepin. They actually hate each other, even when they share stuff. You can tell from the bug reports. Well, you won't see that on Rust Toolkit's community. At least, not yet. Then, I have some big fears. One of them is the uncertain fate of System76. System76 mainly sells hardware, which is how they generate their income that funds the developers of Cosmic. The upcoming two years will be extremely challenging for small vendors like System76, and their failure to endure it will inevitably affect the project's support and progress. The second thing that worries me is the project origins itself. Back in 2010, creating a traditional Linux desktop was looking almost all right, although every project actually failed to really compete with GNOME and Plasma. But in 2025, still doing desktop development? I'm not completely sure if that's what our world needs, and no matter the hype that Cosmic brings among users, the contributions on Cosmic repos remain extremely low after almost two years. Finally is the debate between ICE Toolkit and GTKRS. Originally, Cosmic was using the Rust GTK bindings, but then they decided to switch to IcedRS, and despite that being a huge blow for GTK, because Cosmic using GTK could really have helped to the adoption of Rust inside GNOME, I think it was the right decision to make. And I believe it was the right decision to make, because apart the glib and clang of GTK that, let's be honest, it's not the most attractive thing in the world, the big problem with GTK is that it doesn't work either on Android or web, which significantly decreases the adoption of the toolkit. On the other hand, Cosmic relies their next desktop on a toolkit that is not production ready yet. It literary can't even handle multi-windows at this point. So this is kinda a risk because nobody will wait for them for four more years to finish it. Okay, time for the actual demo. I'm running this on VirtualBox and the performance is super bad, but when I tried a hardware installation, Cosmic Session was freezing on launch, which is a bummer because I can't get a realistic opinion about the desktop. I'm also using the packages that are in Cosmic repos because I hadn't the time to build it from GitHub, but it shouldn't be very old, a few days back maybe. And in any case, I will update on next videos most probably. So, this is it. Wayland session and Wayland only. And that's the only available mode of the desktop. There are plans for making an overview pretty similar with what Gnome Shell has, but it's not here yet. So if you are overview dependent, Cosmic won't work for you. And since there is not overview to open, Super is bind to a command palette, something similar to KRunner in Plasma. With question mark, we can see all the available options, and there are special actions too that I suppose they can be customized. For example, with equal symbol, we can directly perform a mathematical operation, or we can type run if we want to execute a terminal command. Pretty cool feature. With Super and A, we can open the launcher, which is very similar with the current launcher implementation in Pop Shell. Basically, Cosmic Desktop transfers lots of things from System76 current desktop, so the design won't feel like something completely new, although usually it's the small things that make the big differences. And speaking of the small things, it immediately comes on my mind the revamped tiling that perhaps has the same capabilities like before, but it works so much smoother in Cosmic. Um, let me show you, alright? This is Cosmic Terminal, by the way, and I will discuss it later together with the file manager and the Cosmic text editor. 
For now, let's open a few more windows. From this point, if we grab and try to move a window, all the rest will be slightly resized, and while moving the window, new placeholders will be revealed as dropping targets. It may not looking so good on this video because of the virtualization lag, but in reality, it's so slick, it almost gives a feeling of satisfaction. The other very satisfactory thing is we have windows stacking that also works for floating windows. And from this icon on the left, we can move the full group. Um, panels? Starting from the top, we have the workspaces switcher that by default, it uses a vertical orientation, but from settings, we can also set it to horizontal. Also by default, uses dynamic workspaces, but we can obviously set it to statics if we want. Calendar that doesn't really work, other than showing the current date, and on the right, we have some more applets, because everything you see on the panels is basically customizable applets. Sound. Uh, network. Battery, even if I don't have one. Notifications. Uh, mm, let me try send one. Notify? Send? Hello? And we get back this notification bubble in the center, like Gnome Shell but the notification itself is stored on the right similar to elementary. I don't think you should pay much of an attention to the graphic details though, cause everything is like a prototype, and System76 may calls it alpha, but when not even the calendar works, it doesn't sound much of an alpha to me. The tiling applet with some quick options you have seen already, and finally it's the power off menu. That dock in the bottom is basically the same panel like the top, but with different settings. It supports auto-hide that I have disabled, and that floating mode on both panels is also an option. Not by default if that matters, but it looks cool on videos, so I turned it on. The app icons are obviously missing, unknown why, and there is a quick menu for pinning, selecting, and opening new windows. Ah, the epic cosmic settings. And they are epic because accent color works, but not the sound. Because someone thought, let's do the colors first. Fuck the sound. At least the about works, so you know exactly who screwed it up. It was the Pop OS developers. Just kidding. Colors is all it matters. Gnomers know best. Okay, so desktop and panel settings. And we have an option to set the behavior of super key, but it hasn't yet been implemented. Options to set the Windows controls, and last but not least, we have the settings of the top panel and bottom dock that I remind you again, it's the same code base. We can set the position on the screen, top, left, right, bottom, and a switch for the auto-hide. We can select the display we want the panel to be visible, although I'm pretty unsure how good the multi-monitor support is. Then there are the usual stuff like opacity and size, but let me quickly show you the applet situation. So we have three different placeholders for placing our applets. We can put them either on the left, or in the center, or in the right. Assume we want to add a new applet, add applet, and let's add the Bluetooth. Meanwhile, everything starts with Cosmic, like Cosmic Applet Bluetooth, Cosmic Dock App List, Cosmic, can you please shut the Cosmic up? So sorry, and anyway, after that panel flickering, we now have the Bluetooth indicator on the left next to the workspaces switcher. And if we want to move it on the center, right after the clock, we can drag and drop it here. Seriously, guys, Gnome 2 will never die. Somehow we always see it front of us. Russ Lang, 2025, still same patterns as 300 years back. What the hell? Um, I think we done from here, so let's move back. And next is the wallpapers panel. Yeah, I don't think there is much to see here, other than the slideshow. I mean, where are the AI generate wallpapers? Come on, developers. Next is the appearance that we basically can change every color possible. And we also have this import and export for setting themes that I hope one day to be transformed to a proper sync with our account. We can select light or dark, and we have an accent color too, that lately I'm not entirely sure if it's a very solid option because it can easily break on apps with custom colors, which on GNOME is like the most of them nowadays. But then again, there are not any community apps for Cosmic, so Cosmic developers can do anything like setting arbitrary schemes for backgrounds, fonts, placeholders, and so on. And I may be wrong here, but I believe they did that just because they could. I'm pretty sure every single Cosmic developer knows this is just a stupid idea. Another over-engineering? That's an option for selecting the roundness of the widgets and selections. 
It can be round, slightly round, or square. I already can see the KDE user opening a bug here. Hey, Chief, can you please add a slider so we can select the exact corner radius we want? And also allow fractional radius too, because it is widely known that best radius for UI is pi. 3.12159265359 motherfucking corner radius. That's how you make a KDE user happy. Much more useful is the frosted glass effect that adds a blur filter on the areas that have opacity like on the Windows header bars, but that won't work on VBox. Mm, next is the workspace preferences. We can set dynamic or static, but on fixed number it always gets 10 and at the moment we cannot change that, or I don't see any way, at least for changing it. Oh, and of course we have the orientation option I told you about in the beginning. Default is vertical, perhaps for keeping some consistency with the current, but since we don't have an overview, it doesn't matter much. Not for single monitors, anyway. Cosmic also comes with all the applications you need to start working on a desktop, and I mean a terminal, a text editor, and the file manager. They are not really feature complete, they're actually barely working, but they're here with the best of the intentions. Hmm. So, Cosmic Terminal, that uses Alacrity Crate, and I feel like I want to comment on this menu. Terminal doesn't really need that, but I really can't understand why Adwaita doesn't implement such a widget. It's actually useful, and it's basically everywhere, even on Blender and Godot Editor. Anyway, back on Cosmic Terminal. We have tab support, but we can't rearrange them yet. We also have an option to hide the header bar, which is so cool. And we can do a few more things from settings that opens like a sidebar on the right, and that's a core feature of Cosmic Design Language. Most specifically, we can change the color scheme, the fonts, and the font size, so we can't really do much. But all these apps are baby apps, featuring only a few hours of work. They will get much better in short time. Cosmic text, and here's the menu makes much more sense, doesn't it? The Git integration, though, is another feature that makes me wondering if there is an actual plan, or if they are developing in random, pretty much wasting their time. Um, there is a search, there is find and replace, there is even an option to set VIM key bindings. The catch? None of those is actually working. Everything is pretty much prototyping. And finally, we have the file manager that starts up on the list view, but we can switch to grid from a menu. I realize that every designer has some points for doing the things they're doing, but that menu for literary everything feels like an overkill. The argument might be, use your goddamn keyboard me, but I can argue back that I don't have a keyboard because you assholes are selling them for $285. What I'm trying to say is that Cosmic feels that's very biased in the favor of the keyboard use. So people who like that kind of workflow, I believe they will love the project. Although currently the keyboard navigation on LibCosmic is very, very poor. Only the tab key for selecting next input works, really. Speaking of things, they work. Navigation does work, so we can get in and out of our folders. But file creation doesn't. And creating folders, neither. One more thing that works is the theme selection from settings. And I must say, the more I use Cosmic, even if on VBox, the more I get used of this design. It's not bad, to be honest. Just different. And it doesn't feel like KDE menus, perhaps because of the header bars? What you guys think? Ooh, in the meantime, I remembered something I've forgotten to complain about. When GNOME files switched to the new sidebar, it also lost the ability to hide it. Just awful! On Cosmic Files, we can always hide it and gain some extra space, which is very handy if we do lots of drag and drops. Okay, final part, I want to mention the Cosmic Rand R utility, which is like XRand R, but for Wayland displays. If we pass the list option, we'll get all the available modes. And the preferred mode for my virtual box was the 1280 resolution. So for setting it to my display physical resolution, I could say Cosmic Randar and Mode, copy my display device name, and pass the 1920 resolution. Just in case you had the same trouble and you were lazy to check for a solution. And so that was all Cosmic I could do till the next time. If I only had a single word to describe it, I would call it a nerd desktop. Not like developer's nerd, but a desktop for the true Linux nerds. Um, can you please shut the fuck up? You're welcome.